little tiny drill hole through it and then fish it out and replace the core plug. On this occasion I won't again because a lot of the time we don't really need to take that out but there's sometimes dirt behind there. Okay. Now we'll take out the jets. Uh, you'll see on the jets that there is uh, an L and an H if you can just... Uh, that's to set the uh, mixture for the low speed of the machine and that's to set the mixture for the high speed of the machine. Okay. Let's take these right out. They are different. These, on, on, on many machines these jets are different. One's longer than the other or thicker than the other. So when we take, the best thing to do is when you take them out, notice which one you're taking out. I'm now taking out the uh, H which is the high. So we'll see Just make sure as well, when you take these out, that you take out the little washer and the o-ring just there with it. There. Because you can clean them and blow them out and then not realise that these are in place and these can go flying off. And it'll stop you rebuilding it. You'll have to order something new in. Okay, so that's the high. So the high I'm going to put to the right. To the high I've put there. Okay, now we'll take the low out, the L. Again, remembering to take the uh, the washer and the little O-ring out. It's essential that these go back in this washer and O-ring because this seals uh, seals down there and allows the mixture mixture to be right in the carburetor. So we'll put this on the left. If we put them together these don't actually seem that different but because we are going to do this right we are going to make sure that we put the same one in the one it come back on. If we get into the habit to do it now then we get into the habit of doing it right. I put the H on the right and the L on the left so I'll know when I come to put it back in. Take this out as well to clean inside there. It's another area for for cleaning, for air and fuel mixture. If you look at that there, what I've just taken out, there's a little tiny hole. We've got to make sure we clean this through that hole there, that little tiny hole in there, in there, and also in the areas there. So we've got to clean inside there, inside there, and inside there. Right, so that's as far down as we strip it to clean it. Just make sure your little bits are in there, the important bits like your uh, little spring, metering valve, everything, sorry not that, everything is uh, okay. At this point you can either blow it out with an airline and all through all these holes or you can put it into the ultrasonic cleaner and then take it out and blow it with the airline. If you've got an ultrasonic cleaner, it'd be handy to put it in there. If you haven't, no problem. You can just clean it out with the airline. Through that hole. Through the jet holes. Through the hole at the bottom. Just make particular attention to these little tiny holes as well. Okay. Then, if you've got a wire brush, steal a bristle. Wire brush bristle. Okay, get this little bristle, put it in these little holes, shake it around a little bit just to make sure they're clean. That little tiny hole there, that little tiny hole, that little tiny hole. Basically, just making sure there's no blockage in there. No blockage in there, that's okay. And there's okay. Very good. And just in case you've loosened any debris in there, we'll give it another another um, squirt with the airline.
we're now ready to rebuild it. What I always do when I'm rebuilding is just get a drop of fuel. This is your normal regular um, fuel mixture of um, two stroke oil and fuel. And that goes to, I'll put that to one side because I shall be using that in a minute. Okay, now starting from bottom up, let's uh, get the bits out of here again. We need the metering, metering valve or the metering needle. We need the uh, metering spring, the metering lever, and a little bar that holds them in. Okay. Now we know it's clean down here in these bits. We know this side, the carburetor side, is clean. We've just got to make sure that these components are nice and clean. They might look clean, and um, you know they might well be, but just to make sure, we'll uh, have a look a bit closely here. Now, when you get to a meter, when you look at a metering valve, when you look at the end of that valve, which is here. It's this valve which blocks off the fuel, allows the fuel to come in, and goes forward and blocks it off, allows it to come in and blocks it off. Now, when it gets to a point where it looks like this, you can see there's been some wear there on the uh, actual meet, the end of the metering valve itself. Um, now, a lot of people, and, and I'm sure the manufacturer would recommend that you change it at this stage. I personally have put them back in many a times uh, looking like this and they've been absolutely fine in fact I am going to put this one back and I'm going to prove it will be fine by trying it okay uh, so we'll get the um, the fuel here we'll dip that in okay that's got any debris we can't see off any little bits and bobs we can't see okay and I always put that in this is the way I do it okay uh, the metering spring the tricky one I always give that a little bit of a dip as well just in case there's anything on there and I put that in there like that I then dip the metering lever in because like I said I don't want to bring any debris at all in or around the carburetor and also the little um, little stay there put the little bar through the metering lever and the way I do it is uh, be, being careful not to allow the spring to spring away I depress the spring and as I'm doing so I push it I push this little fork there at the top of the metering lever where it, sh where it should be and just make sure that that, meter, that stick is okay it goes, it's going through there like that okay that's all in now that's the way I do it. That's the way I've always done it. I know there are several ways of doing it, and whatever is easiest for you, basically. But that's the way I do it. That allows me then to um, pop the stay screw in. And once this is nice and tight, it won't go anywhere. Oh, that's it. And now we'll tighten it. Nice and tight. That's good, that's not going anywhere. Now we must set this lever now. Although you can see a little bit of wear there on the end of this lever, where the metering diaphragm seems to have made a depression there. Again, I've seen them like this and worse, and they've worked fine. Um, I think sometimes you could go to town on buying new things, uh, new components for these for these carburetors and any carburetor when really then actually it isn't really essential I've seen components a lot worse than this and, and, and carburetors and the machines that they're on working fine for years after so once once that's in there nice and tight and everything's in place that fork once that fork is there through the top of the the right area there the recess for the uh, top of the metering lever and everything else and the springs on okay underneath and it's springing up okay like that to make sure it is then we need to set this metering lever here now, the end of this lever, as a general rule, should be the same level as the metal next to it there. So if you look at that here, that lever 
should be perfectly level with it. Now, it is as near as there, if anything, just a slight bit, and all you do to bring it up slightly is just gently bend it slightly. Now that's come just a little bit too much in my eyes. Just a little bit maybe. So what I do then is I hold this bit here, I hold it down while I push that bit, this bit down with my finger. Bend it back again. Okay, a little bit more. And I'd say for me that's perfect, that is. That's perfect. Okay, so the first diaphragm to go back on is the metering diaphragm. Okay, we've got the uh, metering diaphragm gasket there. We never took that off, we left that on because I think we would have broke it if we did if we took it off. So when you're preparing to put your metering diaphragm in, what I always do is I always give this a little soak in, uh, in your fuel, in your regular two-stroke mixed fuel. There's two reasons for this. Uh, one is so that any bit of debris that's on there will come off and into the fuel. And if you look inside the fuel, there is little pieces that I didn't realise are on the diaphragm. The fuel's that searching that it's searched it all off. And it's gone inside the uh, bottom there. Now, secondly, it's nice to wet the diaphragm with fuel because it helps to start the, the machine because it just helps that bit better with suction, basically. Um, right, so that's that on. And what we do next is this plate. This is next on. Just make sure that's clean. Give that a blast. If there's any little pieces on there that you can't that you can't blow off, just give it a little scrape off like that. Basically, make sure everything's clean. You've got you've, you've took the time to take it to pieces and uh, clean it because obviously that's what you needed to do because the engine weren't running right. So there's only one way to do these, and that's right first time. So if everything you do is spot on and perfect in regards to cleaning it, then uh, we can't go wrong. I always say that. Um, if there's a speck of dirt in a carburetor, it's akin to a, a piece of gravel in a kidney. I always say that, and if I always say that to people I'm teaching, then they will clean the carburetors absolutely thoroughly. A, a kidney can't function with a, uh, a brick or a stone in it um, correctly, and a carburetor can't function with uh, any dirt in it, basically. So if we keep to that uh, saying, we're okay. Right, let's pop this back on. It go, uh, this part here, the smoother area, you've got that part and that part. It's the smoother area that fits onto here and covers the metering diaphragm. As we said earlier, we've got these impressions that come out. So you've got this impression here, this impression here, so that sits on there like that. And you'll see that these dowels sticking out will, will fit nicely into these areas. Okay, so that's sitting nice. Okay, the next diaphragm to go on so what we what we what we are producing here is is gasket diaphragm plate 